up on the afternoon show. We have afternoon show today. We have Gustavo Lima from Portugal. So, Gustavo, how are you finding um, the racing here in Dublin? Uh, well, I'm finding like uh, I think every most of the people uh, very hard conditions. Uh, the base is nice for sailing. It has some uh, some tricks. We have current. We have big shifts. Different types of pressure. I've been uh, here uh, in 2011 sailing the Europeans in the star class and I already knew that uh, the place is not an easy place to understand. But anyway, uh, we had uh, tricky conditions today, uh, light winds. Um, I had two pretty good starts. I was controlling the fleet at the middle of the first uh, upwind. Um, but then suddenly the wind is just gone and came from the left both times and I was not enough in the corner so I just don't like to play it uh, really to the to the corner so I keep my place safe I finish I think 12 and, and 20 it's not really good but it's not a bad result so I managed to keep up moving because uh, I'm out of the laser class for so long so I'm, I'm glad that I'm back and uh, I, I don't know what the future is preparing me but uh, um, I came here to try to do a top eight nations result to to go again to the Olympic team Portugal. Um, right now I think I'm 10, 11, still two races to go. But uh, well, I'm happy to be in the laser class. It's a difficult class with so many good sailors and so high level competition. And I'm I'm glad I'm back in Ireland also. Great and. Um just uh, so tell us a bit about your sailing in the past, just the different classes you've sailed and and your achievements in those classes as well. Well, I started a um, long time ago because now I'm 36 years old. Uh, in the Optimist, I did a couple of uh, worlds and then I passed to the laser when I was 17. Uh, I sailed laser since 95 to 2008 and then I, well, I. I made some good results in the laser class uh, and then I changed to the star class to improve as a sailor and to be more internationally because if you stay in the laser sometimes you don't grow up uh, enough so I tried to go to the Olympics in 2011 in Perth at the Worlds but my crew got injured at the middle of the race so we had to finish our project and I suddenly had no, uh, I couldn't solve my problem because I didn't have a crew. Uh, you don't know, but in, maybe it's because we don't drink enough beer in Portugal, but we don't have big guys. <laughs> Especially in sailing, we need, for the star, we need a crew with the 100, 110 kilos. And it's very hard to find a guy like that uh, as a good sailor. So I had to go back to the laser, which was actually uh, something I, I was not expecting because um, after 2008 I was keen to leave the, the boat forever. I had uh, three Olympics, I uh, finished sixth, fifth and fourth uh, like this in 2000, 2004 and 2008, so I said it's enough. I want to try something different, but then I realized I had to go back. So I win the trials in Portugal, I qualified the country in the world and I went to the Olympics again after three years and a half without sailing the boat. Well, I have to tell you that uh, it was not a good moment because I was suffering a lot on my physical legs and, and, and body because if you stop to sail the class, you lose everything on physical. And the star was 90 kilos, I had to go back again to 85 was the minimum I could do it. But the Olympics was nothing special for me, so I said, uh, because this is not the result I wanted to, I, have to, I will try to continue. And here I am. This is my first international regatta, big regatta this year. Um, I think I'm in the top 20, top 22, which is not bad. But I feel that I can, I can do better. So this is a good training maybe for the world. It takes time to get back into the laser, so I suppose. And then it's good that the World Championships are later on this year, so it could give you that chance to well, have uh, some time. <laughs> as you know, the these kids have... Uh, 8, 6, 10, 12 years less than me, me and Robert. I'm 36, Robert is 40 already. So Robert started last year, I just started in June. But um, it's, not a it's not an easy class. Um, they are all fit, they are all fast, 
they train together all the time. We, in Portugal, we don't have much boats. But anyway, um, my goal is to be in the top 15 in the world. I think it's a good goal. Um, the winds there are, are tricky and not very strong. Nothing compared to the thing we catch yesterday here in the Dublin Bay. It was heavy, it was hard, a big wave, so you need time. So I will be preparing myself to be fit or more fit at that moment in the world. And last of all, I just want to ask you a bit about, um, have you learned anything about Ireland or, or what even do you think about the place we're in now? Well, I, I've been here a couple of times. The first time I came to Ireland was in 2001. I, I raced the worlds in, in Cork, which, which is actually a very nice place. Um, I learned that you, you drink three times more beer than we do in Portugal. Especially because in, when you arrive on shore in, in Cascais, the place where I live, you ask for a beer and it comes a small, tiny, 25 centiliter, 20 centiliter. And here you, you ask for a pint and it's half a liter, so it's uh, almost double, <laughs> or more than double. It's not, it's not an easy, easy thing to, to deal with it. But uh, last year I was in King Sail sailing the, the Gold Cup in the Dragon Pass, which is something that I'm doing quite often right now. That's why I don't have so much time to train hard in the laser. But King Sail was fantastic. And in the Dublin Bay I did the, the Star Europeans, as I told you. And uh, I love the country. People are friendly. It's something that I admire. And uh, we are very well treated here. So it's, it's something to, to repeat in the future. Cool. Thanks very much for that, Gustavo. Thank you. Next up on the afternoon show, we have three of the Dutch. We have Daphne and Rodi and Mars. So guys, do you want to say hello? Hello. <laughs> How are you guys finding um, Dunleary and your trip here so far? Well, we're actually staying in Bray, so we haven't seen that much of Dunleary yet, but um, the harbour is great and the spot is good. So. How are you finding Bray? Amazing. <laughs> Yeah, it's a good, good seaside town. Good golfing. <laughs> golfing. <laughs> we wanted to golf, but we haven't tried yet. Oh. Um, so, Rody, how are you finding um, coaching on the radial course this week? Uh, it's better than last year. I was here for the Ice of Youth, but uh, then it was a little bit uh, less weather, more rain and stuff like that. So I'm enjoying me uh, myself much better this time because it's uh, just uh, much nicer weather this year. So, uh, And also we got good wind. Today was a little bit uh, tricky uh, compared to the other days, but still fine, yeah. Cool. And Maris, what about you? Do you like, do you like Dublin? Yeah, I do. But, um, actually, I thought it was 28 degrees yesterday, but then I, I figured out that I was looking at the weather forecast of Rio. So I was a bit cold on the water, but so far so good. Yeah, it's all right. Cool. Um, Daphne here is very good at singing. So <laughs> dancing, she's better at dancing. Dancing. So. Uh, so Daphne, go go ahead and do your, your little song there. Bubble butt, bubble 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 butt. Anything about Beyonce? She can do everything from Beyonce. Beyonce? Yeah, not me. Yes, he's a big Beyonce fan. She can do a handstand. She's really good. <laughs> Um, and have you guys tried any Guinness yet? No. No, we, we'll catch you up tomorrow night on that one. Tomorrow night we'll have some Guinness and we'll, we'll go into Dublin. Yeah, sure. Yeah. Um, <laughs> um, and what about, about last night. And what about... <laughs> da <laughs> That's your extra hair. <laughs> <laughs> what a good coach you <laughs> So... <laughs> Rody, are you are you going to try and crack the whip and make sure that they were, they're well behaved? I, I think I'm uh, gonna be disappearing, so I'm not responsible. Uh, I don't know where they are. <laughs> um, and Mary, do you think you could do an Irish accent, or have you learned any phrases from? You must have learned some from from me or at least over the years. George. <laughs> from the guy. Yeah. No, we uh, we just um, looking at watching a lot of Geordie Show with the, the pulling the boots. <laughs> yeah. No, we're learning, but it's uh, it's fun. I think actually Daphne is better at it again. She's really good at the accents. But. Step one. It's like the way she behaves. It's so cockney. <laughs> <laughs> and is that Geordie Shore or Geordie Shore? Geordie Shore. And what about? Solid. 
And what about <laughs> what about my accent? Um, but um, <laughs> that's what they say. Boredom. No, but like in but. <laughs> what do we say? What's the crack? I'm Grant. I'm Grant. I'm Grant. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> Thanks, guys. <laughs> Next up on the afternoon show, we have Hugh Styles, who is a British radial coach. Hello, Hugh. Hi, how are you doing? How did you find today? Well, to say it was shifty is the biggest understatement ever. Um, I and mean, we had uh, we had everything from we well, anything we didn't have today was due south. I think we had everything in between that, so uh, it was quite it was quite tricky. And then we had lots of tide as well, so everybody was struggling to get to the finish line in the first race. But a bit different from the past few days. Yeah, slightly different, like the other end of the spectrum. Um, I, th- I thought today was a pretty tricky race, and even the guys in the, in the lead, they looked particularly relieved when they come across the finish line. They actually finished, and then they like looking back with with almost feel, looked quite apologetic that they'd actually finished, and everybody else was still having to battle against the tide. So it's tough. Yeah, did look very tough out there. Um, and what do you think of Dunleary and the venue in general? I've been really impressed. I've been here a few times now. I was here at the Youth Worlds last summer, and uh, all the clubs come together and put on a great effort. Like these events are generally um, the be- some of the best organised from a volunteering and organisational perspective that I've I've been to, and uh, and everyone's very welcoming and very enthusiastic so yeah all in all it's been great I mean we've had a whole host of different wind conditions I think from most points of the compass so as far as we're concerned we're pretty happy they've had a bit of everything cool that's good that everybody seems to be quite happy anyway with with this is my home club um, and uh, last of all I just want to ask you um, can what, oh yeah what did you think of the Guinness factory well, you know, obviously we didn't really go to the Guinness factory uh, during work time, but um, we had a little bit of a, ch- a little bit of a trip up there one, one evening late last week and had a little look around, and it's ridiculous. It's amazing. There's like, uh, it's great. It's a great tour, and it's typically Irish. It's very, uh, very good fun, and there's lots going on, and it's quite nice to sort of see some of the history around, and the view from the top is awesome. Right, it is very good. <laughs> Um, it's good for you anyway, so oh, yeah, it's fine. Absolutely. It's like a proper meal, right? And they give it to racehorses to make them <laughs> go faster. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> what they give it to racehorses for, I don't really want to know, but like... <laughs> um, and last of all, can you say anything in an Irish accent? Uh, Slauncher. Slauncher. Cheers. Yeah. yeah. Um, I, I think I can, but I can't, so no. <laughs> <Okay>. Thanks, you. <laughs>